But with that, let me turn to my dear friend from Wichita uh, and fellow Ways and Means board member, committee member, Mr. Estes. Well, thank you, Chairman Beyer, and uh, thank you to all our witnesses for joining us today. You know, America is known as a land of opportunity. You know, for centuries, men and women have flocked to the country because of the freedoms that allow them the opportunity for a better life and ability to provide for their families. When it comes to earning a living, both men and women make decisions about their employment. They look at the job opportunities and choose careers and industries based on their priorities and values. Some Americans prioritize flexibility in the workplace. Others reject jobs that are dangerous, and some want to ensure they have the ability to reach their earnings potential. As we talk today about the gender gap, the gender pay gap, we shouldn't consider these numbers in a vacuum, nor should we assume we know all the factors an individual may choose as a priority. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reports that women worked 10% fewer hours than men in 2020, and a Harvard study further concluded that women have greater demand for workplace flexibility and lower demand for overtime hours to work than men. Some estimates have the pay gap at 3 to 5% after accounting for these real world factors, and even just a 2% controlled pay gap in a recent report from payscale.com. As we consider the best policies for our country, we need to include all of the data and not just what fits a, a particular political narrative. With that in mind and considering a much smaller adjusted pay gap, I would encourage my colleagues to seek solutions that promote economic growth for men and women. Legislation like the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act in 2017 focused on expanding opportunities for all Americans, helping families keep more of their hard earned money, growing our economy like we've never seen before, and encouraging entrepreneurship and innovation. And in a short time, the TCJA took over the year, took the year to year earnings growth for all workers that had been hovering around two and a half percent to an average of 3%, and it was peaking at three and a half percent. And on top of that, record low unemployment for women. Well, that's right, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act resulted in record low unemployment rate for women in more than 65 years. Unfortunately, the pandemic has had consequences for all Americans. And because of the far reaching shutdown measures taken by some governors and school unions, refusing to let students return to in-person in classroom, the progress made by women through the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act did experience a setback. And due to forced school and childcare closures, we saw women across the country reduce their work hours or leave the workforce entirely to care for their children. For many, they had no other options. But now with the vaccinations up and the cases down, our country's returning to normal. We need to make sure that we focus on pro-growth uh, energy program, uh, pro-growth op economic opportunities. Uh, Ms. Mrs. Bot uh, Bot Botcha, as, as I uh, mentioned, women experienced wage growth and opportunities under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. What effect do you think that rolling back these policies would have on working women and their pay? I think it would have um, very negative effects, not just on working women, but uh, on all vulnerable populations and uh, populations that have special needs. And um, the discussions we're having today over new mandates, uh, more government regulation to address a perceived um, gender wage gap that is has not been fully explained and where we don't uh, we can't just ascribe it to discrimination, but many other factors are at play. Um, the unintended consequences are also creating uncertainty today, even if those mandates and regulations don't go, don't go into effect immediately. Um, us talking about them and um, the political direction that the country has taken does um, impose that uncertainty on employers, which makes them less likely to expand their businesses, which means fewer job opportunities and fewer jobs for these populations. And the more jobs that our economy can provide and the higher quality jobs that it can provide, um, the greater negotiating power working women will have, as well as other vulnerable populations. So that's why we should focus, and I couldn't agree more with you, on um, restoring that pro-growth economy that provides that certainty so businesses will expand and create those job opportunities for all Americans. Yeah, I, I, I think the best way, obviously, to build work for work, to build wealth for working women is to provide greater opportunities, more economic choices, and to get Washington out of the way and, and so that we can return back to the, the booming economy we had before the pandemic. Uh, I know I'm really short on time. I didn't know in your opening comments, Mrs. Bacha, you, you uh, made some mention about you immigrated here because of the American dream. And uh, you know, now that we know pay gaps in other countries, the United States is pretty similar 
to Canada and, and uh, Finland and, and uh, the UK. Uh, are there policies in particular that, uh, you know, it seems like there's not a big difference, but in the United States, we still have a better economic growth and, and better opportunities. Mm -hmm. I, I absolutely agree with that. And I'm, uh, I love this country because it provides opportunities for everyone. And uh, I come from Germany where we have very generous uh, paid leave policies and uh, they have backfired on women in Germany. They're spending uh, more time out of the labor force. They have more prolonged career interruptions and uh, women are less likely to be in managerial positions. And uh, I am uh, very happy and privileged to be in a man managerial position as a woman and, um, and, and the, for the opportunities that this country has provided to me. Well, great, thank you. And uh, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.